Hey guys, welcome to another movie review. Sorry it's a little bit later than usual. Um, <clears throat> it's been really crazy busy these past couple days. Um, and I saw this film actually on opening day, so I feel really guilty that, you know, I saw this film right around the perfect time to review it. Didn't get around to doing it, so here I am. We're finally reviewing it for you. I'm going to be doing a review of Jack Reacher 2, Never Go Back. Um, I saw the first Jack Reacher film back in 2012. I think I rented it from Redbox. And, you know, I thought it was an okay film. You know, I didn't think it was a you know, amazing film, but what drew me into the sequel was the fact that they really were going to try to do a more book-related Jack Reacher, you know, stick to the book some more, because um, I know the Lee Child um, series of books is pretty popular. And so that's ultimately what drew me in, and also Richard Wenk, who worked on the screenplay for this film, uh, worked on The Equalizer and The Expendables 2 and some other films that I really enjoyed, so I was really hoping his special touch would also help the Jack Reacher franchise, if you want to even call it that. Um, so that's ultimately why I'm here and why I'm reviewing this new sequel for you. So in Jack Reacher 2, um, Jack Reacher is still a... Um, police drifter. He's kind of not belonged to any land or specific police force. Um, he clearly does have, um, you know, a police force he once worked for, and he's, you know, just doing his own agenda at this point. Um, very early on in the film, he gets reconnected with a major that um, works for the same police force that he once did. And, you know, the, at first they seem to be getting along pretty well. And um, they want to be able to meet up with each other. And he finds out immediately very early on, uh, almost instantly after we meet this character, that she's been arrested for this crime that she's been accused of. And so Jack Reacher wants to look into this some more to really see if this major was really guilty of this crime that they say that she's committed. And all while all that's going on, and this, as always, this is going to be a spoiler-free review, um, there is a family connection of sorts that Jack Reacher finds out about that he has to figure out if this family connection is true to him or not, if it's this person's really a part of his family tree and so forth. Um, so that happens while all this is going down. Um, he has to help out this major get out of this crime that people say that she's been doing. So obviously Jack Reacher has a lot on this plate this time around, and we follow him on this journey as he tries to get out of this situation. So overall, guys, Jack Reacher 2, Never Go Back, it was an okay film, just like the first one. Um, it was definitely a film that I think slightly improved, and when I mean slightly, I do mean slightly improved upon the first one. Um, not a huge improvement, not the improvement I was hoping to get, but it did improve it a little bit, and so we're going to go over those positives and negatives that reflect that, I guess, so... Um, for my positives and negatives of Jack Reacher 2, Tom Cruise and Kobe Smulders, who is the new co-star that he has in this film, who has uh, been a part of the, a lot of the Avenger films, for those who have seen that, she's the Agent Maria Hill character in those. Um, I thought the two of them had great screen chemistry. I really got the impression that the two of them really know how to work well off of each other on screen. Um, the two characters just bond over the course of the film, and it feels like a real bondage because they really are not too sure about each other at first. And I think the screen chemistry that they provide to this film is pretty good for the most part. We also learned a little bit more about Jack Reacher, which is really what I wanted more than anything for the sequel, was to learn more about Jack Reacher to hopefully get more into, invested into the character. Um, we do learn a little bit more about him. Nothing huge, nothing great. Um, but we do learn a little bit more about him. So I give the, the filmmakers credit. They did do something that I was hoping for in a sequel, just not quite to the extent that we got for this movie. And then going back to what I was saying way, way early on in this video, um, <clears throat> I do think this was a slight improvement over the first film. Um, I think the action scenes were overall a little bit better too. I remember in the first Jack Reacher film, I was really not too amazed by the action scenes. Um, I think the action was a little bit better in this one, just in my opinion, of course. Um, so I think overall this was a slight improvement over part one, just not huge. Um, I also thought this film had a reasonable villain. Uh, the villain did feel very threatening. It felt like a physical and intellectual challenge for the Jack Reacher character. Uh, so I thought the villain that they went with for this film was pretty reasonable for the most part. Not a great villain. Of course not on the same level as Heath Ledger's Joke or anything. Nowhere near that good. Uh, but I do think this was a reasonable villain for Jack Reacher to take on. So thumbs up to the villain, I guess. Just a good villain for this movie. 
Um, and then going back briefly to the family connection thing, I don't want to go into too much detail for those who really do plan on seeing the movie. Uh, but I think it is kind of an interesting little subplot that they added in with the family connection thing. Um, it's sometimes interesting. There's parts that's like, okay, let's move on to something else. But when it does work, it does work pretty well. For my negatives of Jack Reacher 2, um, it takes a very long time for the action to happen. It takes a very, very long time to the point where you're almost asking yourself if you're watching an action movie. There's really a lot of moments here, specifically in like the first 45 minutes, where there is really not a lot of action at all. Um, I would say if I really were to accumulate how many minutes of action this film has, probably no more than 25 minutes worth. Um, and that's being generous. I don't even know if it has 25 minutes worth of action in this two-hour movie. Uh, so it just takes a very long time for that action to happen. And I've got to say, it's very, very slow getting into those moments. And when the action scenes do happen, they're very brief. They're very short. They're very lower than five-minute time ranged when it comes to those they're just very very brief um that's really too bad because when you're making an action film you kind of have to have action in the movie another negative i had for this film is um and I, I think this goes for the first film as well to be honest as well um i think the character of jack reacher just very isn't He's just not very distinct. Uh, with characters like James Bond and Iron Man and all these actors and actresses who have played certain roles for a very long period of time over numerous sequels and so forth, I think why those characters work is because they're distinct. There's something about them that's very distinct and we immediately recognize that trait about them. I don't know if the character of Jack Reacher has that yet. I know Tom Cruise really likes this character. You know, he's played him a second time by now. But he's just not super distinct. And if he is in the books, it doesn't come off that way too much in the movies, I don't think. So as far as if they do make a third film, try to make the character of Jack Reacher more distinct. Because what we saw here just wasn't distinct enough to make him his own character, I don't think. This film is also not very plot-driven, so not only does it fail with action, it just doesn't live up to its plot a lot. There's just a lot of scenes where uh, the plot will happen, then they delay the plot to do this other thing, then they delay the plot again to fulfill the subplot, they delay the plot again to do this. It's just not very plot-driven, and I think that's something that if you're not going to be heavy on action, you have to be heavy on plot, and when you're heavy on plot, make it interesting because, you know, if if your people are paying money to see an action film, they want to see action in it. So if it's not very action-driven and not very plot-driven, I don't really know what this film is supposed to be. So overall, I, I would have preferred a film that would have really would have benefited from a more plot-driven or action-driven script. And then going back to what I've been mentioning earlier throughout the course of this review, um, there's just several slow moments in this film. There's just numerous, numerous slow moments that just really refuse to pick up the pace so if you're not really into that kind of thing for movies when it's really really slow there's a lot of moments here unfortunately in jack reacher 2 that do that a lot and then overall i just have no desire for a third jack reacher film i've given this character two chances already um if they do make a third film i hope they find a really reasonable director to work on it um, maybe that's just the case. Maybe they just, we, we happen to find two talented directors that given the character two different chances and it just didn't work out those two times. So hopefully if a third film does happen somehow, um, we'll hopefully find the right writer and director to bring this character to life finally and the right justice. Um, but at the moment, I really don't see a desire for a part three at the moment. So Jack Reacher 2, Never Go Back. I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. I think it's okay. Um, you know, the screen chemistry between uh, Colby Smulders and Tom Cruise is very good. We learned a little bit more about Jack Reacher. It's slightly better than part one, but not by a lot. Um, a reasonable villain, an interesting subplot at times, but the action takes way too long to start up. They're very, very brief action scenes. Uh, Jack Reacher just isn't distinct enough of a character yet. Uh, it's just not very plot-driven. I have no desire for a part three at this time. Um, and there's just numerous slow moments that really drag the film down a lot. So 7.5 out of 10. If you really like the first Jack Reacher, just rent this as a red box. Um, really no big reason to go pay 8 or 9 or even $10 in the theater to go see this one. So if you really want to see it, just rent it from Redbox. And um, I'll see you guys here for the next video.